Montigny is is difficult to tell. Is even even worse Montigny. than my Ragageles. Tell me, Montigny. 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 <laughs> Ok, eh, si alguien precisa a traducción simultánea, la palestra va a ser en inglés, pueden pegar los uh, aparatos, las radios, los radiosinios, acá. Quien precise traducción o radio está justo la enfrente, do lado izquierdo del palco, mirando el palco de frente, la. Ok. Bom, it's time. Ele tem que pegar um avião daqui a pouco, então, última vez, vamos ter no palco principal, no palco Feel the Future, uma palestra incrível. Oscar vai trazer uma visão totalmente especial de como o ser humano tem que afrontar o futuro, como temos que mudar o nosso mindset, com experiências alucinantes. O cara tem um livro maravilhoso, Chegou da Itália só para falar para vocês. Então, eu peço um aplauso muito forte. Oscar Montigny. <risos> o Montigny. Di Montigny. É isso. <risos> Thank Graças. you very much, my friend. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? How are you? Fine. Ok. So, I'm going to use a lot of slides during the presentation, but before we start, I'd like to do an agreement with you. Am I going to have the slides here also? No. Okay. It's not working. Excuse me. Here we are. Oh, no way. Wait a second. So, first of all, I want to do a few agreements before we start. I'm not going to talk to you about anything concerning others, people. I don't care about anyone else than you and than me today, okay? The, the world is already full of a lot of people talking about others, and I like, do not consider this interesting. Second, I'm not going to tell you anything about what's happening, events, because we keep talking about things we don't know, we fight for things we don't know, we kill people for events we didn't know anything about. Today I'd like to share something with you about ideas. I'm not a tech guy, even if I'm in charge of innovation for a big company, one of the biggest in Europe, but I'd like to share something with you about some fundamental ideas. Then, before we start, let me ask you, how many of you consider themselves pessimist? Sorry, optimist, again, optimist, okay, pessimist, <laughs> too pessimist, too close, are very dangerous, A realist, heroes, how many heroes in the room? No, no, stay, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't believe too much in this kind of heroes. I'm not going to come with you. You know, I'm a hero. I'm a hero is much more interesting. Which ideas I'm going to share with you in the next 40 minutes? First, whatever you consider technology, I strongly believe that humans are the best technology on the planet. It's my first time in campus party. I was just last night. I think you guys are very crazy. You're very dangerous, almost mad. But I love you so much because you have a, such a strange feeling going on, you know? I'm coming to Sao Paulo. I, I was on the way from the Silicon Valley where I spent the last week in San Francisco and the Silicon Valley. A few days before I was in Amsterdam in one of the most important and alternative business school on the planet called Nomads. And two days before, I was in Amman, in Jordan, to share a very interesting educational project with the MIT of Boston for the refugees in the Syrian camp in Jordan. 
but I must tell you that last night in here there was something different going on. I wouldn't laugh, I would be more scared of it. And I strongly believe, again, that you are the best technology on the planet. Second, I'd like to share with you something about immortality. Immortality was a very specific characteristic of heroes in ancient times. Every civilization had heroes, and all of them, they were immortal. Who wants to live forever? Who is scared to die? Hmm. So what a hero is, if you go on Wikipedia, you will find this, uh, this meaning. A hero is any person who does an extraordinary and generous act of courage, which might result in the conscious sacrifice of himself to protect the good of others. Any person, the good of others. Again, who is a hero in the room? Be very careful in your eyes, your hand. This is interesting because someone before said, I'm a hero now after the, we specified what a hero is. Okay. Third idea I want to share with you about is knowledge is the most powerful weapon we have in our hands to change the world. So today, I'd like to stay with me in these minutes in this way. Let's say that this could be a classroom where no one is the professor, no one is the audience. We're all together, both professors and audience. The fact that I'm staying on the stage doesn't mean that I'm more interesting than you. The fact that I'm staying on the stage doesn't mean that I have something to tell you. We are just sharing. But to do it in the proper way, I believe that this should be the best approach. Then I'd be like to put on your piece of paper a few dots, something that you might know, something that you might not know, or something that you might know, but you didn't think about it in a new way that I'm going to share with you. Then we'll try to connect these dots. And this is experience, and you are experts of experience. But again, it's not enough to be a hero, because to be creative, to create creativity, we must be able to connect the dots in a new and proper and actual way. So the journey that we'll take together in this minutes will be exactly this. How to move from here to here. Do you know what is it? Who knows? Ah, this is interesting. You don't know. This is one of the most ancient formula the humanity ever discovered. How to move from this atom of lead into an atom of gold. This, this is the basic idea of alchemy. You know alchemy? How can, we trans how can we transform ourselves from being a piece of lead, that means gross, into a piece of gold? I had the chance a few years ago to meet this guy, this holy guy. And I asked him if it was true that a few years before, he said this sentence. And the sentence was, there are not humans born under good stars or bad stars, but only humans who know or do not know how to read the stars. Stars are those dots on your white piece of paper. And I'd like to share with you a way, a possible new way, a possible campus party way to connect the dots. So let's look at the world very briefly in another way. I'm supposed to be an expert talking about future. Actually, I don't believe in, in any expert who tells you I know what is going to happen. But it's also true that if you look at the sky and you know how to read the stars, maybe you know how to sail with your boat on the sea, right? In the ancient times, sailors were very confident in looking at stars to find the right direction without any tools in their hands. So, with some colleagues of mine around the world, scientists, philosophers, economists, artists, 
we realized that there are probably few milestones, few drivers that are going to reshape the world entirely in a future that is going to be by 2020 and 2030. And basically the drivers would be four. So let me put you on your piece of paper, these four dots. First, demography. The world is going to be totally changed, 120% change by new demographic flows. What do I mean by that? Look at this. This is the population on the planet since a lot of centuries ago until now. You belong to this generation. And this is what happened in the last times. When your grandparents were alive on this planet, the number of the people were living on this planet were even not half, one quarter of how many we are today. Try to think tomorrow if in a very short time, tomorrow, not in few years, tomorrow, Saturday, in this place, there, will, there are gonna be four times the people that are fitting now. At the very beginning, we'd be very glad to guess new people. He is gonna be very happy because he's, he's going to have much more people in the room. And then we will respect females first, young people then, and then the elder one, after few hours, when the food is going to be over, when the tents are going to be full, when the crowd is going to be smelly, we will start fighting. I'm just telling you that everything is going to change very, very, very soon on the planet. And this is what's going to happen about the economy, the relationship between the rural areas and the urban areas, and the number of people living in these areas on the planet and the concentration in big metropolis, at least two of these big cities will be in Brazil. And the economy based in these cities will be totally different by the economies on the rest of the planet. And 80% of the global GDP will be produced in this city. Second, so you must be very careful because there will be new businesses going on and at least two or probably even three of the cities of your country. You are very lucky. Second, driver, environment. We are in troubles. We are officially in troubles. You belong to a generation who is living on the planet that is in trouble. You're, I have five children. I have five children with the same wife. Please clap your hands to my wife. Thank you. <laughs> Look at this. In just 25 years, we have destroyed 10% of the Earth's wilderness. This is us. Look at this. The Earth overshoot day, August the 8th, on the two years ago, all the natural resources of the planet were already gone. How many countries are required to meet the demand of its citizens? Look at that. How many herds do we need if the world's population lived like? We are in troubles. And look at this. In 1970, we were more, almost okay. All the resources were enough to live for a year. Look at the exponential growth. In very few years, we'll be in trouble. So whatever you are coding on your computer daily, night, daily, night, daily, night, has to consider this. I'll tell you later what do I mean by that. This guy, it's a weird guy talking about the planet, okay? And I'm, fine, I'm confident to tell you this because Mark Zuckerberg says what I think. Tim Cook, Apple said the same. Sundar Pichai, Google said the same. Jack Dorsey, Twitter, think the same. Elon Musk, Tesla, think the same. I'm confident that that's a weird guy. Third big driver, technology. You think to know a lot about it, but let me show you because I want to be sure, 100% sure that you are confident and aware of what is happening, what is going to happen, and how much you could contribute to this huge change. Look at this video. I think we need volume.
Well, I think we need more volume because otherwise who doesn't have the translation is not going to take the, the meaning. Where we can give the terminally ill a perspective. I go, I go back. Here we go. Thanks. We could build a little thing that could control a giant thing. Can you imagine a world in which the deaf can hear? A world where we can give the terminally ill a perspective. A future even. A world in which we all grow older. Our food is healthier. Feeding not just a few, but everyone. Without exhausting our planet's resources. A world in which we have answers to problems now deemed unsolvable, where we can control the flow of water, harness the devastating force of hurricanes to come, and where we can sleep safely behind our dikes and dams. A world in which roads are less hazardous, where education is greatly enhanced and made accessible to all human beings. We can make the world so much better, healthier, safer, more friendly even. We are at the verge of a new beginning, a time of virtually limitless possibility. Developments in technology will snowball in all directions and all dimensions. One milestone after another is reached at dazzling speeds. What seems unthinkable today may well be real tomorrow. The question is not whether this vision will ever become reality. The answer is simple. It will. That's for certain. The real question is, can you imagine it? Can you see yourself catching this exponentially growing wave of new technology and riding it straight into the future? If you can, then the rest will follow. Try it. You'll be amazed. Now, it's extremely important that people like you, clever like you are, dedicated as you are to new technology, to future, to coding, is 100% focused on the possibility to try to change. Why? Because we're moving into an epoch that is the move, the shift from a linear approach to life into an exponential approach to life. The problem that we have is that our brain, based on what neuroscientists say, proceeds by an exponential and a linear approach to life, not an exponential. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, four, what? 16, and then? is going to be a mess, 256, and then we are lost. This is the possibility that you have in your hands right now. We are, we are right here. You, you are living in an age that is entering a new, a total new epoch here. So why am I telling you this? Because we are moving from here to here. We are going to be augmented humans but we might have to fight with machines, who knows? That's for sure, in a very close future, we'll have to face a new enemy or a new friend, who knows? Elon Musk is working on merging artificial intelligence and human intelligence. And what is happening by 2045? There are projects in Russia, for example, working to create avatars to be hybrid with machines. This guy, Ray Kurzweil, is one of the most influent men on the planet. He has been ranked by time among one of the under the most influential people on the planet, just because he said in advance, year in advance, what was gonna happen. And 89.3 times percent, it was fine. He said the singularity is coming. Singularity is a merge of genetic, nanorobot, uh, nanotechnology and robotic. He said that by 2029, 
machine will be able to go beyond the Turing test. It means that you will have to talk with machines without having the capability to recognize if on the other side there, will, there is a machine or a human. But basically, what he said is that by 2045, we'll be immortal. We'll see. We we're talking about it yesterday. So why am I telling you this? You just write codes. What does it mean with you? Should we be immortal? This lady is the daughter of the third son of the Mahatma Gandhi. And I had the chance to spend a lot of time with her. She's a very close friend of mine, even if she's 94. And she used to tell me, my grandfather, when she lived with him in the ashram in India, used to tell Tara, Tara, speed doesn't make the difference if we go in the wrong direction. So let me ask you, which kind of code are you writing? What were you coding last night? Where that code was gonna bring you to, is gonna bring you tomorrow? Where that code is gonna bring the world tomorrow? What are you writing on your computer? Why am I asking this? Because you are very important for the planet. You are very important for humanity. Because we have been able to divide the atom without being able yet to divide bread. Is there any way to write a code to divide bread? Because if you think that you, it doesn't have anything to do with you, because you are a geek, or you are a hacker, or you are whatever, I'm sorry, you're fucking wrong. You are the solution. You are the solution. You are the solution. This is the paper of the human rights written by UN. It tells about the freedom of consciousness, thought, religion, beliefs, opinion, expressions, assembly, and association. We have been unable to protect any of this freedom yet. And it also says about rights, identity, liberty, security, food, health, education, work, property, peace, life. We have been unable to do that. Globalization, a lot of richness on the planet, also thanks to your codes, to your ideas, to your IOE, IoT, artificial intelligence, and whatever. Look at these numbers. 1% of the population possess a richness, which is exactly the same than the rest of the population on the planet, 99%. And only 62 people in 2016 had the richness that was equal to half of the population on the planet, the poorest one, many in Brazil. And this is what happened in the last few years. 62 last year, 80 the year before, 388 2010. Do you know how many they were last year and this year? Eight. So global, globalization is right, but the result of the globalization doesn't look right. We are not going to make it. Eight people, 50%. So, what is going to happen? In which kind of world are you going to code your codes, your ideas, your products, your services, your intelligence? The world needs you now. We don't have time. You have to code peace. On your computer, you have to code solution. You know what this number is? Our debt. 325% of the GDP, more than the GDP. We are bank corrupted, okay? So, the system didn't work. And if you think that it's not up to you, you are extremely wrong. I totally agree with Mr. King. You might not be responsible for the situation where you're living in, but you will be if you will not do anything to change it. So, in the second half of my speech, let me bring you to Narnia. Do you know Narnia? It's a fucking lovely place where everything is fucking possible. 
First, we have to fight this mediocrity. Mediocrity is at least half of my life. Second, we have to do extraordinary actions. You have to write extraordinary codes. You can't do something ordinary anymore because being ordinary didn't work. So which kind of pill are you going to take? Blue pill. You're going to be a, an amazing hacker, geek, nerd, coding something. But let me tell you, you will be part of a flow anyway. There will always be someone trying to sell you something to let you do what they want you to do. And even if you'll be on the right hand side of the picture, trust me, there will be someone else telling you what to do, how to be. But I believe this. We all have a place where we can be what we dream to be, also for just an instant. And at least in this place, you have five days, six days, six days of instants, day at night. You're crazy. You live in tents for six days. I was telling to my family what was going to happen here. They didn't believe. I had to move last night. I wanted to go in the tent camp showing to my friends why I was not with them and I was here. They told me, you're crazy. What fucking are you doing there? Who is these people? And I told them, these people, they're thousands. And it's the 11th time they're here. It's the 11th time. And in 12 places on the planet. In the last 12 years, who is crazy? Me, my, my friend, my family, or you? I believe us. Red pill, you're a clown. And you lead the change. How? The fourth big driver that is going to change the planet in the future, after demography and environment, and technology, thanks God if we believe in God, or thanks whatever if we don't believe in anything, are going to be ethics, values, and behaviors. What's your ethic? Which are your values? How do you behave? Again, what are you hackering? <laughs> the planet now needs people that is going to change the system from inside like the egg. It's a metaphor. Egg. If the egg breaks and it's broken from outside the system, the life that it was into the egg is going to die. If the egg is going to be broken from inside the system, whatever is the system you are living in, it's time for a new life. So what do we need? We need a revolution. Basically, a re-evolution of consciousness. We need conscious hackers, conscious geeks, conscious nerds. Because you are the future. What you are doing is part of the future. We are only at the very beginning of this huge shift. And you are part of those minds living on the planet in the right moment of the shift that have the chance to write a new world. Unless you just want to live to be rich, famous, good looking, healthy, who fucking cares? You're going to die. <laughs> What's the God, the, the, the God, no, the code that is going to survive? I wrote this book. How, how long do I have left? Can, can someone give me the time? She doesn't. Is there anyone? How long? I can't see. I have oh, 15 minutes? Okay. I just wrote this book that is going to be translated in Spanish and in English very soon. That was a bestseller in Italy. And I wrote about economy, a new idea of economy, economy 0.0. .0. What 0.0, .0 means? I'm bored of people telling I'm 3.0 of this, I'm 4.0 of this, I'm 5.0 of this. What the hell is that? I'm 0.0, .0 back to basics. That doesn't mean going back. 
That doesn't mean going slow. It means going forward. That means going fast in the right direction. Back to humans. Why? Everything is economy. Economy is not just buying something, a product or a service, and exchanging it with money. We are having an economical process right now. I'm offering you ideas and suggestions. You are paying me with your attention. As a father, I'm offering to my kids an education program. They are paying me with their respect. As a teacher, I can do the same with my scholars. As a politician, I could do the same with my citizens. We keep exchanging ideas, emotions, products, services. Everything is economy. So let me share with you this other idea. What economy is, though? It's a purpose or it's a tool? Your code, it's a purpose or it's a tool? And again, human beings who are the pillars of any economical exchange, humans are the tools or are the purposes? Again, your codes are tools or purposes. And the money that you will make out of your ideas are for profit or are no profit? Profit is evil and the profit is good? Or is there any third possibility? My provocation is this, right profit. In the economy 0.0, .0 right profit is first the right to make money. If you make money, you are not bad. You are not evil. You worked. Now if you make money, you are evil for the, for the world. And again, you don't need economists telling you if you are right or bad. To, be, to create the right profit, it means that you did it correctly, honestly, in a good way, in a sane way. It's enough to go home looking at you in front of a mirror and telling yourself, today, selling my codes, hackering, geeking. Have I been correct, honest, good, sane? You don't need anyone else telling you if you were. You know. Did you get more than you were supposed to get? You are a stealer. And you know. Maybe the world does not know, but you do know. So back to your business. What the right product is, and again, what a right code is. As a marketing manager of a huge corporation, let me tell you this. I believe that a right product has to respond to four different necessities. So you can answer yourself if you are a good guy or not. First. First necessity, you must make profit out of your ideas, out of your actions. Second, the necessity for the client, for the user, has to be satisfied, happy, and grateful. Grateful is much more important than being satisfied and happy. Grateful. You are grateful to just very few people on the world. And only few people on the world are grateful to you. Because when they were expecting for your help, you disappeared. Like in, it happened in my life. How many times did I disappear when there was someone waiting for my support? Third, collectivity has to get a benefit from the transaction. If it is just in between me and the market, without caring of the collectivity, it's not going to work tomorrow. And fourth, the most important one, the planet doesn't have to be damaged by your actions and possibly has to be supported by your action. You want an example? Let me give you this example. So it's very clear. It's a metaphor, but it's true. Look at this. It's made of what? Plastic. Do you know how long it's going to take for this, bot, for this glass of plastic to disappear from the planet? Naturally, 450 years. Do you know when the plastic has been invented? 
I'll tell you, we don't have time, a bit more than 100 years ago. In 100 years, we invented something super useful, like your codes are going to be very soon, I hope for you. Something that is not going to disappear, something that is going to affect your ocean, something that right now, in less than 100 years, is as big in the Pacific Ocean like Central Europe, three meters deep, and is going to disappear in 500, in 450 years. Your children, your grand grandchildren, your grand grand grandchildren, your grand 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 grandchildren, and it will be there, already there, still there. What do we don't understand? This is this we don't understand. This is a metaphor. I'm just saying, which code are you writing? Your, your code is going to remain for years. If it is a good one, it's going to change the world. If it is a bad one, it's going to stay and it's going to affect the world forever. Who solved the problem? Who is going to solve the problem? This guy, 17 years old guy. Borjan Slat, CEO and founder, he founded the Ocean Cleanup at age of 17, the youngest ever recipient of UN's highest environment award. June the 3rd last year, he started the Ocean Cleanup, a 17 years old guy who's gonna save the planet. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You know who had the chance to do it? and they didn't, and if they did, they were gonna be the richest company selling water on the planet? Those. Who's the company here? I hope it's not the sponsor. Passa Quattro. Why didn't they do that? They could. You think they didn't have the money to do what Boyan did? They were focused on the wrong direction. Profit for me? Probably good for you. No cares at all about collectivity, either about the planet. They have to disappear soon because they are dangerous for us. They are sponsors? No. Let me reach the end. Machines are for answers. Your code are answers. You are humans. We are for questions. If you ask yourself the right questions, you're going to write the right answers. If the right questions, if the questions will be wrong or not respondable to the necessities, you're going to write the wrong code. Sorry, we don't have time. So if you're, if you're running a company, my suggestion is ask yourself these five questions. Who am I? How do I create the organization or project to get it done? In what world do I want to live? What do I want to contribute or change? How do I bring it into the world? These are five very interesting, good questions to ask yourself whatever if you work for a company or just by yourself. You surely need a vision. If you don't have any vision, you are totally, you are, we don't need you. You surely need a mission. So what you see, vision, the mission, why? But if you do not have a vocation, you're like, a piece, you're like an animal, an object. You are human. You need a vocation. A deep, big reason why. All of us, we want to be the best hacker, geek, nerd company in the world. My suggestion, provocation, and then who cares? I'm going to get a flight in a couple of hours, so see you soon. Is how to be the best geek, hacker, nerd for the world. In the world belongs to the last millennium. For the world 
is the future. Let me tell you, reading at your codes, listening to you, meeting you, whatever will happen, trust me, people will forget what you said. Again, trust me, people will forget what you did. What they will not forget, how you made them feel. Grateful, <laughs> grateful, grateful. Idea, aspire to be a giver. Good vibes, positivity, strength, peace, hope. Write codes, please, please. Whoever you are, do this. I don't know what you do in your life. I don't know why you stay the entire night at your computer. But whatever you do, do it for this. I'm not saying to do something else. I just want you to focus on the vocation. Whatever your vision is, whatever your mission is, stay focused on your vocation. This is the end. In the economy 0.0, .0 love is the most important currency. Let me show you this. Please, be. let me trust you. The answer is yes or not. If the answer is yes, you have to raise your hand. If you do not raise your hand when the answer is yes, your brain is not going to record the fact that you said yes. If you say yes, it doesn't work, okay? How many of you naturally wants to be loved? Thanks. How many of you naturally wants to love? Come on, guys. 100%. This is economy, offer and demand. I know that you know what's going on in your mind right now? How this is fucking also, this is basic, this is obvious, this is simple. This, this guy jumped on the stage to tell me that we all want to be loved, we all want to love? Yes. Tonight, go home, switch on the television, and tell me how long are they going to talk about love? And then read magazines and newspapers and tell me how much are they going to write about love? And then listen to your friends talking and tell me how much will they talk about love? How much do you talk about love to your children, to your friends, to your people? How much do they do with you? We are normalizing something that it's not normal. Favelas are not normal. People dying in the streets is not normal. We can't afford anymore to do like this, you know? Who's going to take care of it? Institutions, governments, religions? They're not. So reach, let me reach the end because we don't have time. Oh, something is interesting. First this, do you know the entanglement? This is the basic idea. You must understand that what goes around comes around. We are all interconnected, the quantum physics just discover that the empty space is much more interesting than the gross. We are all interconnected in an electronic field, in an energetic field. This is science. I'm interconnected with you. Energetically speaking, we are all the same things. This is science. It's not religion. It's not philosophy. It's not uh, Buddhism. Is science. Two atoms divided tens of lights years away, one half from the other one. Once the scientist touched one half, the second half miles away, lights years away, change in the same way. Once we spend the time together, we'll be interconnected forever. The only possibility I have to change my life, to take care of my life, to love myself, is to take care of you, to love you.
because if I only focus on myself, it's one working for one. If I do my best to be a gift for tens of you, thousands, 150,000 in six days, and you're gonna take care of me, this is gonna be extremely powerful. This is the number of cells that you have in your body. You can't even read the right number because when there are so many zeros, you don't know if there are billions, millions, millions of billions, billions of millions. That's the number of cells you have in your body. And your body is perfectly an economical system. If I break my fingers, the entire body is going to repair the part. Why? Because the body is scared to be infected. So the entire system go there on the finger and repair it. And even the finger, even if it is very peripheral in the entire body, he, she, it knows that has to take care of itself. Why? Because it's risky for the entire system to be infected and then die. This is the number of cells in our body. We are only less than eight, millions of, eight billions of people on the planet. We can make it. We are already perfect. So be focused, please, on your vocation. You are immortal. You will not bring anything with you, nothing. Not even the best code that you're going to write is going to come with you underground. You're going to leave it beyond, behind you. So why do you have to live for this? When you will be dead, do not look at your rest under the ground, but in people's hearts. I'm not a knacker, I'm not a geek, I'm not a nerd. How do know? I do not know how to do it. I'm just asking you, the world, the planet, the humanity needs you to do it. And this is the end. I think that you are all heroes. A hero was a demigod, half human, half God. And because of being half human, he was weak. There was just a little part making him weak, but he was half God. So in a case, in our case, I'm just suggesting you to be a demigod that is a new hero, not because you're half God. Your father or your mother, they were not gods. Just have at least half of yourself driven by values, ethics, behaving in a proper way. This is your God. Any person really intent on making this world a better place for all. You are the best technology. Let me finish with this. Who remember this picture? Very few of you. This is easier. Who remember this picture? Okay, a bit more. You remember this picture? Okay, a few more. Humans are the best technology. When there is a vocation, even the machines can go ahead. They have to turn. You know why? Because in the tank, there was another human driving. In here, there isn't a vision, there isn't a mission, there is a vocation. That's the best machine, the best technology on the planet. You are here to write programs, but you are a project. You are not a program, you are a project. Please, since you are so clever and intelligent and so actual, don't be a program, be a project. Because you are not, we are not human beings living a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings living a human experience. And this is the secret. Atom of lead, atom of gold. You know what's the difference? The difference is only three electrons from 82 down to 79. As a human, 
you are just three electrons away from being gold. Why we are not gold yet? Because we don't want it. Will, vocation. What's your vocation? The world, the planet, the humanity needs hacker, geek, nerd, made of gold, not of lead. Please, it's important. Thanks. Uh, Vamos a hacer dos o tres preguntas. Si alguien quiere hacer alguna pregunta de momento, levante a mano y vamos a compartir los micrófonos porque le tengo que salir para el aeropuerto. Entonces, si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, alguien quiere preguntar alguna cosa, si no, tengo una pregunta. ¿Ningún quiere preguntar nada? Seguro. Marcelo va a hacer una pregunta. Ok. Marcelo. Marcelo. Oscar. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, Oscar. Uh, yes. I, I would like to know. You are in an environment of, of technology. Yes. Yeah. Of uh, a coding, as you said. Okay. Uh, me and Paco, we talk about a lot of, about this. Uh, the cybernetics, robotics, intelligence, uh, intelligence, artificial intelligence. How do you see you use the, this metaphor uh, this metaphor, uh, we have to develop ourselves. Some, somewhere in the, the path, we're gonna change. I think we're gonna mix with machines. Yes, uh, I think uh, so. It's hard to say, uh, to define what this humanity is. How do you see this, this mix of technology with humans and this new kind of humanity? Does it change everything, something? that you are talking us? This is a very interesting question. You know what, why, you know why you scare me? You know why I was so scared yesterday when I was, when it was like 1 a.m. in the night, I was walking by the, the desk and there was hundreds of people coding, writing, gaming. And I was wondering, why are they doing that? And uh, obviously, I don't want to judge anybody. I, even myself, I am not what I'd like to be, how I'd like to be. I'm just aspiring to be what I'd like to be. So I'm not a model at all. But let me tell you, if you are unable to write your own code, there is no chance that you'll be useful for the world writing whatever code you'll be writing. I personally believe that the external world that my external life is just a projection of my inner condition. There is no chance to live a life out there that is, not, that is anything else than the linear projection of who I am inside. I can play a game, I can act as an actor, but by the end of my life, it will be clear if I was who I really was or not. So I don't know what you're writing on your computer, but whatever you are, unless you can write yourself in a new way, there is no chance to be interesting in your life. So find a way, find a path to recode yourself. Because if we are living in such a planet, in such a condition, if Brazil is not yet what you'd like Brazil to be, it's because of you not because of anyone else. You don't like institutions? Well, work to be the next governor. If you don't want to do that, don't bother. In Italy we say, don't break my balls. Just look at your life, make your money, build, build your house, buy your car. Don't bother. <laughs> if you want to change, if you want a big change, Please, be the change. Gandhi used to say, be the model you want to see in the world. You're hacking uh, some company's uh, uh, website. It's not interesting. Write your 
own website as a model for the best website of the world. Go out in the world and show the world how good could be a website compared to the banking website, to the university's website, to the institution's website that you wanted to hacker. We do not need people breaking the windows in the street, doing a revolution in the roads. We need people doing a revolution within, being better people, living as models. We don't need teachers. We need witnesses. You need friends looking at you saying, wow, you're different. You're amazing. You're lightful. You're a good guy. Please, let's code a new world where the good ones are cool, are fucking cool. The good ones. It's important. Do it for my children, please. And then let's talk with the institutions. Can I say he also represents an institution? Let's not say which kind of institution. And let's share it. We don't have to battle them. We have to share with them the way. And the only way is not breaking windows in the street or screaming or yelling. It's, this is my life. It's possible. Can we do it also for them? I'm sorry. This generation is the generation that has to lead the change. There is no chance for us to live easily. There is no chance. We are in a deep sea with big waves. I'm sorry. You cannot decide to change the sea. There are big waves. You have to sail. I don't know if it's a good answer. It is, but you don't have any time. more time. <laughs> you need to leave to go to the airport. Guarulhos is not easy from here. <laughs> um aplauso muito forte para Oscar, uma Thank missão you. incrível da vida. Thank you very much for your time, for your presence here. I hope so see you in more campus parties sure. in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the